Hello and uh, welcome to this video. It's just uh, I'm just making a random video because I got a new laptop a little bit ago and I want to see uh, how good it is at recording these kind of things. So uh, it's got a pretty big display, so the text will might be a little bit smaller and a bit more high definition, um, which is uh, nice to me. But uh, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, today. I just kind of wrote up a very uh, very simple Java algorithm that I'm actually pretty proud of um, that you can see it open right here that uh, lets me find the integral of a given function um, and yes I have steam open right now so ignore that. So anyway so to do this it's actually really simple I use what's called a uh, right a triangular sum so all right, let's go ahead, open up paint.net real quick, and let's do a little diagram. So say we had a function. So that's, this is x. So this is a little bit of calculus. So um, this is x, and this is f of x, OK? So say we had a function. So we had, uh, let's just draw a simple function. OK, so say we had this function. And we wanted to find, say we drew an imaginary line here. Uh, I'm going to do that in this color. OK. And then we had, so point A is here. And then we drew another imaginary line here. I'm going to draw that as well. Here. OK, so say, let's call this point A. And this is point B. Okay, so to do to so say we wanted to find the red area. Okay, so to do this, there are many ways to do this. One way to do this is to draw little rectangles. Let's do this in. Uh, let's do this in blue. One way to do this is in rectangles. So you draw a rectangle here, here, and here. And then uh, you go up here, and then here, like that, whatever. And you do that going all the way up. Now that's a little accurate, because if you start from here and down here, uh, you're going too much over. And going from here, you're going too far under. This is called a right remum sum, because you're starting from the right. and Going, starting from here is called a left Riemann sum because you are going from the left. And the idea is that these rectangles are supposed to get infinitely, infinitely smaller. So, um, and that's uh, where the calculus comes in. You do what's called a limit to, to get that. And that's all fine and dandy, but uh, that's a little bit above what, um, that's a little bit above what a computer can do just with the simple mathematics. But one thing a computer's good at is being able to do something really tiny. So uh, I forgot to mention that we're not even using that type of sum. So uh, there's another way to do it, where you draw a line here, right? And then this, and then draw, connect these points. So let's just do it on a bigger scale. Let's say we just wanted to do all the way from here to here. Uh, let's just do this. I'm just gonna do a normal line. Let's go from here to here. Sorry if there's music in the background. That's actually a show that's being watched downstairs very loudly. So from here to here. So this is a trapezoid, right? So the height is the distance from A to B. And the two bases are the F of A and F of B. OK? So what you do is you just make an infinitely small amount. So right, so you do this one, and then this one, and then this one. They're all trapezoids, right? So that's the trapezoidal sum. And just doing a trapezoidal sum is actually the most accurate compared to the rectangular sums, because there's less that you're going over and under. Uh, so that's what I am using today. Today we're going to be finding this area. Uh, this is called an integral, this area. This is the integral of f of x uh, from a to b. All right. So how do you do this in Java? Well, there are some very sophisticated uh, programs that do this and APIs that you can find. But I want to find out how to do this very simply. So I went ahead and I wrote up a really quick algorithm. 
in Java. So let's go ahead and make a new Java project, and I'm just going to call this integral video. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a new interface. So first things I at first is to make a function. Function. Okay, so this is a very simple interface. It's going to have a public double f of double x or x. Very very simple. Uh, this will be our f of x that we will be evaluating. Next, we're going to make our, our main class. So main, give that a public static void. Okay. So the first things we're going to do is we're going to make a public static double static so that it can be used within the main method. Uh, and this will be integral. Okay, and it's going to take in a function. Function, function. Actually, first thing I want to do first is return zero for uh, Turn zero. Uh, I could spell. Okay. Uh, actually, the first things I want to pass in are the double are the limits of integration a and double b. Okay. So one thing you notice is that, uh, okay, so actually first, double area is equal to zero. We're actually going to return area at the end. So, okay, so one thing you may have noticed is A is less than B. Now, if you wanted to put B before A, it's actually the same thing. You just do B to A and then negate that, okay? So to do that, first thing we want is we want to declare a modifier. So double modifier, and it's just a oh, car. Uh, this is going to be equal to one. So now, so if a is greater than b, uh, double temporary a is equal to a. We're just going to store a in a separate variable, and we're going to set a to b, and b to the temporary variable that stores the original value of a. And then we're going to make the modifier negative 1. So that, that way, we still do the integral the same way, except for at the end, we multiply by negative 1, so that it is accurate. Next thing we're going to do, oh, and I forgot to do one more thing. Then we have to, de we have to declare our in increment. So I'm going to make, I made that a constant, static, final, double, increment, uh, increment is equal to 1 e negative 4. Um, I found 1 e negative 4 to be pretty accurate uh, and pretty pretty fast. Uh, obviously, when I first made this, I just tried using double dot min value, which is the smallest number greater than 0 that, can, that a double can have. But just doing integral from 0 to 2 took it dinner, never even finished. As accurate as it is, it is inefficient for the computer to do. So we're going to make a for loop. We're going to do double i is equal to a plus increment. OK, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to start it off at the first value after a. OK, i is less than b, and i plus equals increment. So we're going up by the increment. OK, all right, so double d from a, so this is distance from a, is equal to i minus a, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do area plus equals increment divided by 2. So if you recall, the area of a trapezoid is 1 half the height times the sum of, sum of the bases. Now if we're looking at this, they were to do a, a trapezoid here. Um, from here to here to here to here. The distance between A to B is the height, and the basis are is the function value. So if we had an increment, so here, and the distance from these two or these two lines is the increment value, then the, the height is the increment value. And the base is the f value of the original one and the inc the one plus the increment. Okay, so this is the height divided by two times function. This is the function passed here dot f of 
a plus d from a, right? So this is um, this is uh, the distance between uh, this is. So say we were the first pass would be somewhere here, right? So it's just a plus the distance from a. So that would give us here this x value. Um, so plus function dot f of a plus distance from a minus the increment. Okay, and the reason I'm doing that, say we were uh, at the first pass, so we're at the increment. So it's doing plus the increment. Increment is this. So so say we were from here to here, and this is the increment. So here is a plus distance from a. So this is where we're at. This no, this is a distance from a. Sorry. This one is a distance from a minus the increment. So that gives us our two points. So on the first pass, we were right here. It gives us this point, and then distance from a should be equal to the increment. So that would give us a. Um, so that's how I did that, and then that's it. So when I return it, so let's just go ahead and try this out. So this out. Um, so we want the integral uh, zero to two, and we want we're gonna do. I'm gonna just go ahead and do a lambda expression for this one. Return math dot how x squared. Okay. Okay. So this is just part of it. So we're going from 0 to 2 of that. And uh, let's go ahead and look up actually integral calculator. All right. Let's go ahead and just do this. Unless this gives me, this doesn't give me, sorry, definite integral calculator. All right, let's just use Wolfram Alpha here uh, to test this out. So let's just go ahead and do x squared dx from 0 to 2. Okay, and it's going to give me x with 2.667. As you can see, that is what we got, or 2.66. Six. So how do we get it to do that? So the this, I'm going to do this by the standard of the AP test, where they like to round to three decimal places. So that's what I will be doing. So it's going to be, I'll put this in parentheses, math.round area times a thousand point zero. Okay, so if you see this gives us just this. It's this and then two decimal, uh, three decimal places. So to get out of there, and then it just gives us point zero. So this is our rounded value. We just divide again by a thousand. And that is our simple way of, of uh, rounding to a point. All right, and then we're going to multiply this whole thing by the modifier. Okay, and that gives us 2.667. So if we were diversity, so from 2 to 0, it gives us negative 2.667. And as you can see, that's what you're supposed to do. So from 2 to 0, submit. Let's see if it does it on here. Negative 2.667. Or this one goes to four places. Zero to, let's say, 20. 2666.7. Let's go ahead and do that from zero to 20. Okay, oh, sorry about the noise in the background. 2666.667. Now, one thing you do need to keep in mind is this increment value. If you turn it up, so say, or turn it down, more like, turn neg this up, uh, it actually takes a, a longer time. So save this for 10. See how it's taking a while? That's because it's adding point zero, point, then 10 zeros and 1 every time it's doing that. So it's going to take a long time, especially if you have bigger numbers. So I have found 4 to be a much more accurate it's pretty accurate and it's uh and it's pretty fast. So let's just do, for example, let's just do a sine function. Sine of x. 
or sorry, math dot sine of x. Almost forgot we were programming for a second. <laughs> math dot sine of x. 0.592. Let's go ahead and plug that into Wolfram over here. Sine of x dx from 0 to 20. See if that gives us the same 591. What do we get here? 592. So yeah, uh, that was my quick video on integrals with uh, with Java. Uh, again, this is very primitive, very, very, very dirty, but it is a way I came up with it in like 20 minutes, probably less. Um, there are libraries that let you use calculus within Java, obviously. You would need to figure out how to use a limit, how to find a derivative, how to find an antiderivative, and then you can find the integral. But uh, this is the dirty way of doing it. Um, and feel free to use this. I mean, I don't know what you would use this for. It is more of a novelty than anything actually useful. But anyways, uh, subscribe for more coding stuff. Uh, this is going on my personal channel, so... There's going to be more information on Sueño Americano. Don't forget to check out tinycountrygames.com slash games slash Sueño Americano to find out more on that once more comes out. We'll have a link to that in the description. And also my senior project is going to be soon. I will be streaming that and I will be posting the streams on here as well. So lots of cool stuff that are going to happen on this channel. Uh, yeah, so see you later and goodbye.